Imagine you're a 13 year old boy living in Berlin, Germany. The Second World War ended last year and you and your family of four live in an apartment on the Soviet controlled eastern side of Berlin. You've been hearing rumors that relationships between the Communist Soviet Union and the Democratic United States have been deteriorating, but dismiss it. Because just a year earlier, the Americans and Soviets were working together to overthrow Hitler and the Third Reich. Recently, the Soviets issued a blockade over East Berlin. And though you were initially confused why, now you understand. All of a sudden, you see a Boeing B-29 Superfortress fly over you, with its bomb bay doors opening. Hello, this is the History Corpse, and you're watching the Berlin Airlift. The war ended on September 2nd of 1945, six years and a day after it had begun. As the war winded down in 1945, the Allies went to peace conferences in Kremnia, peninsula north of the Black Sea in Turkey, and in Germany. These conferences were where Germany's territories would be split, and arrangements were made where East Germany was given to the Soviets, while West Germany was given to the U.S. and Great Britain. Those nations agreed to give up some territory to France as well. This arrangement was called the Kommandatora, and Berlin was broken up exactly like the country. East Berlin equals the Soviets. The West Berlin was given to the other allies. The Soviets weren't fans of the agreement because they had just fought a long and bloody war against the Germans. More bloody than it had been for the Americans and British. They wanted the German nation to be crushed under them while everyone else wanted it to eventually return to sovereignty. The French, American, and British regions were joined in 1947, and that area was called the Bisonia. And in March 1948, the Allies decided to join together as one economic unit, at which the Soviets were against, and withdrew from the Allied Control Council. They created the douche mark, which was a new currency since inflation had ruined the previous currency. This caused many concerns for the Soviets. They felt with all of the other nations being capitalist, it would be a matter of time before they came after them. They were also worried that the already worthless Reichsmarks would become even furthermore devalued by the introduction of a new currency. They exited the previous Commandatora agreement and blocked any supplies coming in from the West. On June 24, 1948, they shut down the Autobahn, the German highway, which, quick fact, doesn't have a speed limit, putting more trust on the drivers. Anyways, back to 1948. They shut it down, saying publicly that it was for repair, which was obviously a lie. They also said that the Allies weren't allowed in Berlin anymore. The relation between the Western nations and the Soviets had been deteriorating, especially with the United States. As a Marshall Plan shows, America was anti-communist. Their plan was to provide relief to Europe after the war and try to stop any of them from falling into a communist-style government. The Truman Doctrine was similar and basically made America's foreign policy anti-communist and made their goal to contain communism. Before the blockade began, the supplies had been bought by train and truck. Now they were forced to use the air to provide relief. They also cut power from Berlin. The options that Truman faced, along with the other Allied countries, but mainly America, were to surrender Berlin to the Soviets, marking a major loss in their efforts to combat communism, or to go to war with them, which would likely kill millions. But wait, there was another option in between. An airlift. If the Soviets shot at them, it would be an act of war. It was a risk, yet they were willing to take it. Codename Vittles, they would be airlifting supplies into Berlin. As of June 24th, they only had 36 days of rations left. This task was a massive task that many considered impossible. Because the army predicted that they would need 1,500 tons of food into Berlin each and every day. They started just two days after the blockade began. For the next 11 months, until May 12, 1949, they would be delivering food and other supplies from the air. In total, over 2.3 million tons of supplies would be delivered over the course of 
around 300,000 flights. Every 30 seconds, a plane would either take off or land in Berlin. Sometimes they would drop candy to improve morale for the kids in Berlin. This was called Operation Little Vittle. Over 65% of the supplies were coal. In fact, after a thousand hours of hauling coal, the dust from the coal would account for about a hundred pounds of weight. The Berlin airlift continued till September 30th, just in case the Soviets went back to a blockade. The blockade had ended on May 12th, 1949, because all of the Western countries were placing an embargo on them. Basically, they weren't trading with the Soviets no more. The airlift cost around 224 million and 2,323,738 tons of supplies were delivered during it. The country was split in two. The Federalist Republic of Germany in the West, with the Western countries control, and the German De Democratic Republic on the East part of the country, on the Soviet side. This just shows there is more than just a name. The Berlin Airlift is considered the first main act in the Cold War that would last about 45 years. The Berlin Airlift was a crazy feat which saved many from starvation. However, this is only the beginning of the Cold War. I'm glad to announce that throughout this year we will be uploading a lot of Cold War related content and would love for you to put some of your suggestions for videos in the comments below. Please subscribe as this took a lot of time, and we also have to balance this channel with school. As promised, if we get 150 subscribers by the end of this year, we will be releasing a documentary for all of you to watch. Anyways, like it if you like it, subscribe if you want to see more, and comment what you thought about the Berlin Airlift. Recruits, dismissed.